Hey everybody, Steven here, and for today's video, I'm going to show you three kind of movements and stretches that you can do um, if you work at a desk in order to kind of break that up so that you're not sitting in that static position for long periods of time, which is what we know causes a lot of the problems that we experience. Um, especially if you've done this for years and years and years, these effects stack, right? So obviously if you can stand up, that's going to be something that I would encourage you to do, stand up, move around. I have a um, autonomous desk, it's lowered right now so I can kind of show you these movements from a seated position. But if you can get a stand-up desk, um, and it doesn't have to be this, this one is motorized, but if it was a Vera desk, whatever it may be in order to do that, or just every half hour to an hour, like get up and just kind of walk around, that is going to do wonders for you just from kind of that perspective of getting some type of movement. I was understanding some people like, well, I can't walk around, can't afford a Vera desk. And uh, these movements you're going to be able to do just from your seat here. So we're going to go cervical spine, thoracic spine, and then we're going to get into the wrist. Usually these are the things where I'm having some type of like forward head leaning posture as I'm sitting there. I'm in this kind of kyphosis, this kyphotic state where I'm like this, my head leaning forward, I'm doing this. And if I'm leaning my wrist against something, they end up holding that static position and it just creates this rigidity that we don't want. So <clears throat> this is going to be a combination of FRC, which is the functional range conditioning certification that I got a couple weeks ago and restorative exercise, which is Katie Bowman system. And I've been fortunate enough to train with her a handful of times and amazing information with both systems, right? So this will be a combo of the two. So we'll start with uh, cervical spine here. So we're going to do cars. We're not going to do cars with every part of the body. I'm going to do another video where I'll showcase some of this stuff with that as well. Um, just look up functional range conditioning. You'll find a lot of these videos on YouTube as well. Um, but with this, we want um, radiation with the body, meaning that I'm going to be somewhat tense with the rest of my body in order to facilitate movement through whatever joint that I'm moving. So if you think about a car, Dr. Lecreo has the one of the best examples where if this was kind of the circle of what my joint can do. A lot of times people are doing this small little circle on the inside of it for their daily movement. You're never showcasing to the joint the full range that it has. Now, flexibility is different than mobility. Flexibility is passive range of a, of a joint. Mobility is active range of a joint. So we're actually doing a mobility drill here because we're activating the range of motion that we have with this. So if my head kind of just does this all day, we're gonna do the biggest circle that we can make. Understanding that if you experience pain with this, you need to move around that pain and don't just push through it. If it's tight, if it's uncomfortable, that's completely normal, that's fine. If it is painful, do not do that. And I would actually encourage you to seek out a physical therapist or a chiropractor that understands how the body works. So with this, typically I'm gonna hold like fists, I'll hold my fist down and I'll be tight. I could do this here. If I need to hold on to something or I could put my arms here and then create that tension. We're gonna go a little bit lower in terms of how much kind of like systemic tension, irradiation that I wanna create. We'll do kind of what they do with the morning routine with FRC, which is gonna be 30% uh, irradiation with the rest of the body, and then 40% with the joint that I'm gonna be moving, so we're gonna be moving the neck here. I've done this with clients that are like, what, what does that mean? Like 30%, I don't even know. It's whatever you perceive to be 30 and 40%. This isn't an exact science that I have to know and gauge that. We do know that you're not trying to drive 100%. You could hurt yourself with that because you haven't warmed up to it. So I'll just put my arms up my side here. Tension there. And I'm not going to raise up, but I'm still going to tense my legs here. I'm going to tuck my chin as far as I can. When I do that, I'm not leaning my head forward. It's a, just a simple tuck. I'm going to scrape my collarbone with my chin as far as I can, scraping here. At this point, I'm going to dump this ear back over my shoulder as far as it'll go. I'll roll through the back, and as I do that, that ends with this ear over this shoulder. I'll tuck down, and I'll scrape the collarbone to come back. I'll go both directions. I can do a set amount of time or reps. Most likely you're not gonna time yourself if you're at your desk. Let's just say three to five one direction, three to five the other direction, right? With that, what I'm wanting is 
little to no movement with the rest of the body. A lot of times what you'll see is like a tilt. Like, so as somebody kind of goes like this, that tilt happens. I want to make sure that I don't do that as best I can, okay? With this, creating this tension reinforces that. If I'm tense and I'm doing that irradiation properly and I start to tilt like this, I'll pick up on it. I want to be here, tuck, roll back. And these are slow movements. What you're not going to see me do is this. It's controlled. Down, scrape, back, roll through the back here. And my neck is 40%. So if the rest of the body is 30%, this is slightly more than that. Driving through, tuck down, roll through the front. So that is the cervical spine. Like I said, three to five with that one. Now thoracic, I'm going to have to scoot to the edge of my chair here. <clears throat> and for this, I'm going to cross my arms across like this. Kind of keep some area open. If you're in a super tight space, might not be able to do this much. Or you could just stand up and do it, which is the better way to do it anyways. But I'm going to go here. I'm going to tuck as far as I can down. I'm going to flex my spine as far as I can. Now, if you're looking at the side, this is a very small movement. I could round my back a ton, but that's not what we're wanting because now I'm not isolating my thoracic spine, which is my upper back. What I've done is curved my lower back, I've tucked my pelvis and I've kind of folded in on myself. As I'm here, it'll be a small tuck and that's as far as I can go. Any more than that, I'm gonna have to move other body parts in order to actually achieve whatever range of motion that I'm doing. So here, it'll be a slight tuck down I'm going to pretend that there's a direct line from my sternum here. I'm gonna rotate as far as I can. Same thing, no shift there moving with the rest of the body, right? That's it for me, very subtle. I'll tilt back. The shoulder is dropping back over the pelvis now. I'll roll through the back. Once I get here, I'll rotate into this side, just like I did with the other one. I'll tuck down, and then I'll roll through the middle. Go opposite direction here, so I'm tucked. I'm going to rotate as far as I can. I'm going to drop this shoulder back over the hip. Pull through the back. Get here. And as I'm rolling, I'm trying to rotate. I'm in that furthest extent that I can rotate. I'll drop down. And then I'll roll to the start. And we would go both directions. That same thing. Three to five right there. So that is a thoracic spine car. Cars are controlled auxiliary rotations. Right? Note the beginning word there. Controlled. So I'm not just trying to throw my body through this, right? Here, legs are tense, same thing. I would feel my pelvis shifting a bunch and I don't want that, right? Now you're gonna have some, uh, I don't expect anybody that's watching the video that uh, they're gonna have complete body control, but that's the thing that we wanna gain over time with this is that we're going to gain more body control. It might feel awkward. It's like, I can't even, I can barely, or I'm moving all over the place. Over time, you gain more control and that's the important thing. Um, Dre has a good quote, which is like, you never hear anybody say that they want less control. We want more body control. That's what everybody wants. And that's what this, that system gives you over time. Last one is going to be restorative exercise with Katie Bowman. This is a wrist stretch. So a lot of people will do all the fingers, right? And it's good to do wrist mobility. I'll do another video on that because there are wrist cars as well. But looking at stretching all this, because a lot of times it's going to be really, really tight. With Katie's system, what we're going to do, and I'll do it on this arm. I'm going to draw this up. My palm's going to be like this. What I want though is that it's in alignment. I'll show you on this side here. So I'm not pulled in like this and I'm not externally rotated like this. So I don't want a ton of internal rotation or external rotation. I want this stacked with the shoulder. Now once I'm here, I'm going to grab my digit, my finger, and I put my thumb in the middle uh, of the knuckle here and then I put the other two fingers or one finger at the tip of the finger and then I pull down. Okay, and I'm holding this in place, making sure that it's not moving. The other thing that you'll see is like wrist collapse where it goes like this. I don't want that. I'll move to the next finger. Each hold 10, 15, 20 seconds, right? Just feeling that good stretch. You might be limited in time and something's better than nothing. So if it has to be five seconds, that's better than nothing. Middle finger. And what you'll typically notice is through your middle and index finger, usually it's the tightest. And then go here. The reason we do this is that because of the flexibility and mobility of each joint is going to be different on the hand here. So we want to stretch these individually versus one whole unit 
because as I do them individually, I can stretch that associated muscle. Thumb is a little bit different. I'll show you on this hand. You're going to put thumb to thumb. And what it does is it creates a hook here. So I can grab here and then I'm pulling away this way. So I'm pulling my hand down with that restriction. I'm getting that stretch through here. And then I can actually tilt that hand a little bit and can go in and out. And I can change that angle, kind of like a rudder, and that's gonna stretch that a little bit differently. And then the last one, I'm actually going to cut my thumb like this if I can. I'm gonna go straight with my palm. I'm gonna try and pull this down still. So I'm trying to go like that, and then I'll rotate like this, hold it, and you'll feel through here. We call this texting thumb. Then I'll go this way. There we go. And that is it. The whole routine, I know these are longer ones with explanations, but the whole routine isn't going to take that long. We're talking like a couple minutes at most. Every hour on the hour, I mean, once a day is better than none at all. So just figure out what you can do, start there, and then build up over time. Like I said, getting up and walking is something that I can do in combination with this. I'll do another video where I'll showcase some ankle stuff and I usually do this uh, standing desk with the half dome to stretch my calves, another restorative exercise um, thing that Katie really pushes hard on. But we'll we'll showcase some other drills that you can do. Elbow, wrist car, elbow and wrist cars will be another one. Um, some stretching that I can do for the neck as well. But uh, hopefully this adds value and this helps you guys when you're working at your desk to get that movement in. Remember, long-term static positions are kind of the thing that we're all needing to avoid. Regardless of whether or not it's standing or sitting, it's that static position that we really wanna avoid. It's not so much what you're doing, it's just the static nature of it. So that is it. If you liked the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all of my content, hit the subscribe button for me. Hopefully this has brought you guys value. Um, and if there's anything that you're like, well, that didn't make any sense, or I need a better explanation, or I'm having trouble with this, or something completely unrelated that I could help you with, please let me know in the comment section and uh, I will for sure make that video for you. Thanks so much for watching.